Hello, and welcome to my first episode of the Horse Lion 3 Player Startup Guide. Uh, my name is Cinnabar. I am going to be your tour guide through this whole process, and we are going to get you going on this game because I know it is a very steep learning curve, even if you played the previous Horse Isle games. This game is completely different. So when you first load into the game, you are going to be loaded into a club welcome center. This club does not have a welcome center, so I am just at the club tower, or the, the spawn point for the club. And so you load in and you're right at the front door here. Now I play in third person, so most of these videos are going to be in third person, because that's how I get around. <laughs> So, you will also not have these clothes, these are something that you can craft or you can buy from a player store who has crafted them, but we will get to that later. So when you load in, you are not going to have a horse, you're not going to have any equipment, um, you're just going to start from square one. So the first thing you're going to have to do is you're going to have to run out of the club region and running on foot is very slow <laughs> and very excruciating so just bear with me when you run out you're going to be looking for essence which are these floating orbs basically of light um, and they spawn outside of the club region so if you look up here this club region right now. I'm still in the Acacia Flats village. Um, I am nearby the village, which means I am outside of the actual parcel or uh, land that the club is on. I'm just outside of it, so it's still considered the club property, uh, but the club can't build on it. It's just kind of a buffer zone, so club courses and things like that can't be put on it. So I'm going to run past that where I will still be in the club region. Club regions extend 1.5 kilometers in each direction. And so there we go. I'm outside of the club parcel region, but I'm still in the um, village region. So these up here, here we go. This is Essence. And so you're gonna run up and when you get close enough, it will kind of come to you, like so. When you get a few meters away from it, it'll float over to you. So you don't have to be right, you know, you don't have to run through it. Um, just getting kind of close to it. Now, I am subscribed um, to the club, which is, you know, your monthly or annual subscription to the game. And because of that, you notice when I pick up the essence, I get three. Uh, if you're not subscribed, you just get one, which is still fine. Uh, you can build that up a lot. It just helps to get three every time. And so if you played the previous horse isle games, you kind of know already what these findables are. And I'm lucky here, I have two of them. Uh, this is a mother horse stone. Sometimes they're laying down like this. Sometimes they are standing up and you can see that they glow. You hit E is the default. I have X on my keyboard to pick things up. So hit X and it gives me some gold dust. You run over here, collect some more essence. <laughs> and I'll come up here and grab this pot of gold. These are easier to see at night because of the rainbow coming out of it but obviously you can still see it during the day. So that's nice, you can look from a distance. And these you have to get pretty close to to pick them up. Okay, so now that I have a little bit of gold dust, or you if you're just starting, have a little bit of gold dust, and some essence, we're gonna run and capture our first horse. There's one sitting right over here, eating. I don't know what, because we're on salt flats, so maybe, you know, he's just licking the ground. I don't know. <laughs> so 
to hit him in over. And I find capturing a horse in first person is much easier than third person. And so when you first start out, before you go capture your horse, you don't want to get too close to it because they will run away from you like that. So you want to keep your distance. I'm just going to get over here where I'm next to it and not behind it. So it makes it a little bit easier to capture it. I'm going to zoom into first person. Oops, maybe. Okay. They'll turn and face you and that makes it easier too. So before you capture your first horse, you're going to want to come up here to equipment. Go ahead and click on it and it's going to pull up all of the equipment you own. You're going to want to make sure you have the lasso. If you don't have the lasso, let me scroll down to the ones I don't have yet. Um, it will tell you how much essence it costs and if it costs any uh, specific biome essence. And so like this, for example, tag um, only costs 50 essence. You don't need any kind of special specific biome essence. So you click on that and unlock it. Um, I think the lasso is 50 or 100 essence. I don't remember. Um, I got it day one of live, so it's been, it's been a long time since I had to purchase any of these essential ones. So you use it or shortcut is L on your keyboard. So I'm going to hit that and you can see on the left side here, this is the equipment I'm currently using. Uh, click it to stop or press X. You can also hit escape um, on your keyboard. That's what I usually do. And so to swing your lasso, you just hold down the click button. And as you hold it down, it's going to get farther and faster. And you just try and release it uh, when it gets to the horse's neck. And, oh. and as you can see, it takes a little practice. Good thing this is a patient wild. There we go. So I captured my first horse, or you captured your first horse. <laughs> Congratulations. So to pull up your most recent capture horse, you can click F4 on your keyboard, or you can click H to pull up your horses tab. So for example, hitting H pulls up a list of all my horses. Um, if you hit F4, it pulls up the last wild caught, and this is the horse, and its profile, so you can see its base stats, its performance metrics here, so this is um, people that breed for competitions and stuff, this is all very important to them. Some people breed just for personality, and so this horse actually is pretty good. He's uh, what we call 5 out of 6, which means 5 of his 6 personality traits are above 50%. Uh, his only personality that's less than 50% is leader, uh, which is good. So leader doesn't affect you being able to ride him. He's not too fast, but we're going to hop on him. Uh, you can release a wild that you catch for a short period of time. I do not recommend doing this, and I will tell you why later. Uh, you're able to sell these wilds uh, at a club for money and so that's that's a really really good way to get gold dust so do not uh, do this they will not pop back up in the world they will just disappear <laughs> so I do not recommend doing that this is a mare uh, 6.3 years old when you capture them they're going to be an un unidentified breed uh, there's a, a thing you can research in a club library they're called tomes Again, we will get to that later, um, but there's one you can do that will automatically identify the breed of the horse, which is good if you're starting and you think you'll find a lucky find or something like that. Otherwise, it's you know not that important. It doesn't really matter what kind of breed the horse is, unless you're breeding for it or you like the horse's conformation and want to keep it. So I'm going to go ahead and mount. I don't have any tack or anything, and the horse doesn't have experience, so there's a message that's going to pop up there. It's going to be a rough ride. This horse is going to be very slow and you're probably going to fall off a lot. So you just hit the up arrow on your keyboard to get going. Still faster than running around, which is nice. And he's super cute. <laughs> Trotting around. 
And so this is a good way, once you capture one, to go a little bit faster exploring the area, capturing essence and finding those uh, findables that will give you some gold dust. You're probably wondering what, oh, yep, see, I fell off. So to get back on, you click F on your keyboard or you can click on the horse and mount them and get going again. It's easier to hit F and you just automatically remount. You can also do this to dismount. So if you hit F again, you'll hop down. It's going to take a minute. So you're probably wondering what those buildings are in the distance. That is a player's ranch. Um, and those are just very basic buildings and you can change the colors of them and stuff. You can see they also have a course on there. Uh, so that's pretty cool. And that's something that we'll get into later as well. Or if you want to, you know, hop into that now, you're welcome to. I just do not recommend it. So we are going to go back into town. Now that we have a pony. And we are going to go try and find some tack for sale. If you don't want to ride all the way back into town or go find a club, or if you're out in the middle of nowhere and you're very not close to a town, I'm still kind of close to this one, so I'm just going to ride up here. Um, if you're not, you can hit escape and it will pull up your menu bar. You can click club. And if you're part of a club, you can quick travel to your club's place. It will tell you how much it costs. Uh, this is your travel bar. So anything, anytime you quick travel anywhere, whether it be to a club, a ranch, a course competition, anything like that, it's going to use this travel bar. There are ways to refill it, um, but we'll get to that later. So list of all known clubs. I'm going to go by distance. And so if you're not, if you're out in the middle of nowhere, you can pull this up and I recommend just going to the fastest, the nearest club to you. So this is Acacia Flats, which is this one that you can see on my screen and you can quick travel to it and it'll tell you how much travel it costs. Now, another way, this is actually perfect timing to get to a club is this, a free party trip to Brightfield Staples, which is actually a club the other club that's not far from here. So you can hit yes, and this will cost you no travel. It doesn't cost any of your travel bar. It's a free party trip. So we'll go do that. And as you can see, there are a lot of people here. So some of you might lag out. I know a lot of people have problems with their games crashing doing this. So if you decide to go to a free party trip, You've been warned. I'm going to go into first person so I can see where I'm going. And so this is just another example of a club. And this is player built. All clubs are player built. They are not uh, built by the game or anything like that. And so the owners of the club can move stuff around. They can build, tear down, things like that. So just an example. These are the different buildings. So that is a mail building where you can send mail, receive mail from players. You can also do mail delivery contracts, which gets you gold dust. Um, all of these buildings have NPCs. And so you can talk to them and they will give you a quest and they will give you a little bit of quest points per quest. Um, you can click view and this will take you into the post office screen. You can read mail, send a letter to a player, um, do that, and you can include gold dust or mobia if you are friends or club members with that player. Ezro fund is basically taxes in the game. It's to help try and control the economy. Um, so it's only every so often, 3.8 real big, I think it's every month or 14 days this activates um, taxes are two percent and so this takes 
money from your on hand gold dust amount and if you have a store at a club it will pull from that as well so this is the total amount pulled from the economy which is a lot of money um, so it's just kind of horse isle's way to try and control the economy if you played the previous games you know how important that is so stuff doesn't skyrocket in price a few months into the game so you know we come here to escape the real world but you just i guess can't escape taxes so nearby ranch houses this is for mail runs that will show you uh, players and where their ranches are in relation to where you're standing now you can take on a delivery contact contract sorry and it will randomly choose one of these ranches and give you a heading which will be on your mini map here um, and that will give you a little bit of quest points i don't rem recommend doing that until you have a horse with tack this is the vet again another npc that can give you a quest they are all <laughs> randomly designed so some of them look a little funky that is okay so if you have a horse that bucks you off because he gets injured or something like that you can come here and there will be a message here telling you what happened to it and how much it costs to do that this is where you can also geld stallions things like that you can view the horse before you decide to geld them if you want uh, I would not recommend doing this because you cannot breed them if they are gelded the only horses really that are gelded are competition horses or really old horses um, that people use for riding around and don't use for breeding anymore. You can also do a preventative checkup. This will help prevent the horse from being injured. Full immunity boost, yay. So if you look, this horse is benefiting from preventative checkup, which means um, if the horse gets injured while I'm riding them, it won't buck you off. You have It's basically like a safety. So you can get one injury and not have to do anything. If you get a second injury on the same horse, you will not be able to ride it or breed it or do anything, and you will have to come here and heal it. So I highly recommend paying the 200 gold dust to do that. This is the club library. This is where you can view the breeds, the biomes, the essence for each biome is pictured here. There's also a guide here where your essence is, um, and I will get to that in a minute. But this shows you how much essence you've collected in each biome. Collectible resources, this is plants, uh, crafting materials, rocks, things like that. You can click on it and it will tell you what it is, where you can find it, certain volcanic regions, and what it can be used for. So this is only used for dyes um, and this is the color it makes. So that's useful for various reasons. Craftables, this is everything you can craft at your ranch or at a club tower. Recipes, textiles, um, cheat codes. So like I said earlier, the clothing you can make, you can craft this at your ranch once you get it built, or you can buy it from a player who has already crafted. You can click on it and it will tell you how many of that item you have. So if you're trying to make overalls, I don't have any these are the materials you need for it. So I have enough cotton bolts for it and I have enough rope. So if I wanted to make overalls, I could do that. These are different items you can use. They all have a specific purpose. Same as this. There's a lot of stuff you can make in this game. You can really customize your player and your horse, jewelry included, and of course some tack. 
Uh, plushies, this was a new addition to the game. These are, you find them in caves, and they're basically little stuffed animals that sit on the rump of your horse. Uh, again, you can find them in caves, and they're like little black boxes. Um, I will go over that in a different video. But they're cute, they're a cute addition. They're kind of like pets. They give your horse a little bit of a bonus. Um, an imbuement bonus is what it's called. And so these are just the different kinds. There's a lot of them, and it's all randomized. Other items. So these are all uh, the random animals that you can find in the game. Uh, tells you what biome they're found in. There's a lot of them. Pretty cool. If you're looking for a certain animal to take a picture of or something like that, this helps a lot. And then, as I mentioned earlier, the tomes that you can research, like the one um, that automatically identifies your horse's breed when you catch it. So up here, subject worthy of studying. This is the list of different ones you can research. I can have four because I have an active sub, which gives me one, 50k player experience, which gives you another one, 10 million player experience, which is a lot of player experience. I'm not there yet, so I don't have that one. 10k quest points, I don't have that one either yet, I'm working on it. 100,000 quest points, again, obviously I don't have that if I don't have the 10k. And I just did get uh, my 10,000 player points. So, total you can have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Currently, um, I think that's a little excessive, but there are some people that already have these numbers of experience and points in the game, which I think is very impressive. Um, I've been playing this since day one of live, and I'm not even close <laughs> to any of those. So, kudos to those people. Um, these are the ones I have. I have the Harvester. Odds of Double Collection. This applies to almost anything you pick up in the game, aside from the plushies that I mentioned you can find in caves and obviously wild and um, lucky findables like pots of gold, mother horse stones, things like that. I have a horse trader, 50% more gold from trader due to better negotiation. So this, like I said, you don't want to release your wild back into the wild because you trade them at traders. I highly, highly recommend this as your first tome. Um, this is going to get you gold dust very quickly. This takes selling a horse from 2,000 up to like 4,000 or 1,000 up to 1,500, things like that. Uh, highly, highly recommended. I also have this one. I do a lot of competing and training of my horses. This doubles the experience my horses get and also doubles the experience I get as a player. So that again is highly recommended if that's something you care about. If you want to get to bareback quickly, um, this is definitely something you want. I also have the focus training one. This increases stat training. Again, like I said, I do a lot of training with my horses, my com competition horses. This is very valuable. Um, I can have a horse basically completely maxed by the time it turns two years old and is rideable. So that's that. This is the livery or the ostlery this cares for your horse. It's very expensive. I do not recommend doing this. I'll do it to show you. $1,300. So this one, you can see his bars are mostly full. His groom is zero. Mood is kind of low. And so to get that up, it costs $1,300. And all it does is fill the groom and pull the mood up a little bit. So I do not recommend doing this unless you have absolutely no food or water or you're not by any food or water 
and you need to care for your horse. This is the die station. These are all my dies. Um, you can craft them. You can experiment with all the different plants and things you've collected. Like I said earlier, that bird of paradise I looked at in the library is only used for dyes. So you can add however many you want and it will tell you over here what all you have added. And then when you have the amount of ingredients you want, um, so like for example, if I did one spinach and a water iris, here, one spinach, one up, water iris. Save it. Oh, there's my foal drop. <laughs> so as you can see, when you breed and you get foals, you get a lot of experience. Wait for this to stop. <laughs> okay. <sighs> Sorry about that. Back to crafting the dies. Craft it. And this is the die I came up with. You can look at it and it will tell you the hex code for it. So if you wanted to put this in the horse's profile or something like that, this is the code for to make this color. These are the ingredients I used. Going back, that's the color. That's that. This is the horse expert. This is where you will identify the breed. So like that horse I caught earlier, this one, identify the breed. It takes a minute. She's a grade pleasure horse. So you can do that. You don't have to do this to sell your horses at the trader um, unless you're trying to sell a specific kind of horse for a little bit more gold dust. You do not have to do this. Um, and I will tell you why later. You can also do breed confirmation. You can do a horse versus a confirmation. So for example, I have this Nez Pierce horse. I'm gonna do a confirmation report against, uh, let's do an Akel Teke support horse. And it only has 17% penalties against that breed, which really isn't a lot. So he could be a Teke if he wanted to, um, but since his parents were Nez, he's a Nez. You can also do determine genetics. This will determine the color genetics of a horse. So if I go to that horse, you go to their genes. These are his color genes. There is a topic in the forums that highlights this and tells you what all these things do. I'm not going to get into that right now. That's pretty advanced. You can do that if you wanted to. If you're breeding for color, that's very important. Moving on, this is the auction house with this little auction hammer on it. And these are player sold horses. You can view them. Little bread filly. She's kind of cute. Good personality. And you can go back and if you like them, you can place a bid. Um, raise it by 10% or double raise it if you really want them. If you play the previous horse hour games, you pretty much know how this works. You can sort it by bid amount, which does increasing to decreasing value. So the most expensive ones are going to be listed on top. And the cheapest ones will be at the bottom. You can sort by the breed, so if you're looking for a certain breed, you can scroll through, grades will be at the top, and then you will get into the breeds. So if I'm looking for a tech, click on this, ooh, that's a pretty boy. And you can view them that way. You can also sort by gender if you want to. Pretty simple. 
pretty straightforward. And then you list to put one of your horses in auction if you wanted to. These are the horse traders. These are very, very important for the game. This is the most reliable way to make gold dust in the game. Uh, they will buy any horse for 300. You can do this if you're desperate. I do not recommend doing this. Um, there is a breedable trader, and that will take any horse that is of breeding age, which is any wild. Every wild you catch is going to be breeding age, so keep that in mind. Um, you want to look for the breedable trader, and they pay you with that um, trader tome. I have, they will give you 1,000 gold dust per horse. So definitely save your horses and find a club with a breedable trader. Wild caught great horse or subbreeds, that's a little bit more. I still want the breedable one. So there's some clubs in the game that do a trader list for us. Um, it is not at this point generated by the game devs or the game itself. It is player made. Um, and so to find that, there's a few of them that do it. So I will pull up the one that has today's. I think it's where the drafts go. So I'm going to pull up by alpha. These are alphabetical order. I'm going to go all the way down to where the drafts go. And I'm going to look at their profile. And they have the horse trader location list. So as I said, you're looking for the breedable trader. This will take any wild, any horse you have. If you have one that's bred, that's purebred, I recommend this one. This will take any breed of horse as long as it's purebred. Um, if it's not purebred, this one is a good option. They also have most of the breeds listed. And so you probably noticed I have appendix. So if I wanted to sell my appendix, I would want to go to this club, Laputa. Um, for now, we're just going to sell that wild I found. So breedable is at the club lamp. So I'm going to go back to the club list. And I'm going to go down and I'm going to find lamp. I'm going to quick travel. And their horse traders are front and center, which is very nice. So I'm going to go... It's not at that one. Not at that one. There it is. So I'm going to go to Breedable. This is the wild horse I caught. It gives you a chance to change your mind in case you accidentally click one. And you sell it, and as you can see it gives me 1,000 gold dust. Which is pretty good. So, that is how you sell the horses um, that you catch. And that is how you make really good money in the game. So if you go out, once you get a horse with tack, uh, running around catching horses, that is a very, very good way to make money. Uh, very efficient. And you get a lot of essence in the process, running around looking for them. And you get to explore new regions. So each club hopefully has a shopping board. Um, usually you have to like run around and find it. If you want to buy tack from a player, you will go here. You will look for items being sold. We'll go to tack. And as you can see, plushies count as tack because you place them on your horse and they give a little bit of a bonus. Um, there's English tack. There's monotone English tack, which means it's all the same color. Um, and then there's also Western tack. Western does not have a monotone saddle. Uh, the ornate Western saddle is monotone. Um, so if you wanted that, this would be your option. They also have a regular Western saddle and there's no monotone western saddle pad at this point. So the only saddle pad you can get is this one. Um, 
there is a monotone western bridle and then the ornate western saddle is going to be monotone for now we will just do english I'll come up here this is probably the cheapest one so you can see some of these are dyed english saddles um, they come pre-colored naturally they come white so this is the club it's at pink light one stop is the name of the store so we're going to quick travel to that club alpha we're going to go down to pink lake and we're going to go find the store store was one stop so these are all player stores I'm going to find one stop it's right there across this little river go up and click on it and there's the tech so they have a full set I'm gonna go ahead and buy this buy this and you only need a saddle pad if you want decorative items you can get that as well I just need the basics. We're going to pick a horse. Um, all of my horses have tack. I'll put that tack on this one. So when you go into the horse's profile, you're going to want to tack them up. Here's the saddle pad I bought, the saddle I bought. And the bridle I bought. How pretty. So now your horse is tacked up. So when you mount them, zoom out again, you can turn a lot faster. You can run a lot faster. You can stop and you will not fall off unless your horse is ornery and bucks you off. Uh, when you catch wilds, I know in the previous games there's a, a learning or yeah, I guess a learning curve with the horse where they buck you off periodically until they get to a certain amount of experience. That is not the case in this game. If you catch a wild and you put tack on it, like I said, it will not buck you off unless it's armory. And that is a personality trait. That is not um, every wild. So here's another wild. Go in the first person, pull out my lasso. does not have a good personality so this was not a horse I would want to ride she's stubborn uh, she's ornery which means she's going to buck you off and she's lazy which means she will not keep her speed um, if you let go of the up arrow she will start to slow down not a very good horse but she will get me 1,000 gold dust at the horse trader which is nice so zoom out again And I'm just going to go out and start exploring. So that's the basic startup guide. I hope it wasn't too complicated. I hope I gave enough good pointers for you guys. Um, that's how you get your first horse. Tack them up uh, so you can begin running around horse aisle and enjoying the game. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again next time.